So let me give you a chance you, for you to also to ask me questions. Then we can. OK, um, I'll say, for example, we can talk in terms of work. Um, like, do, did you did you have to change your career? Did you have to down, you know, like get us a, a job that doesn't fit your career? Because that has that is another challenge that we have when you travel from Africa and you come here. Many times you have to upgrade, you know, like get a master's degree or you start with regular jobs, which you're not very comfortable with. As for me, I can do anything. I'm hands on. I don't care. I just start <laughs> from where I am. So how was it for you? Yeah, so for me, first of all, I came through scholarship. So I came directly to teach Swahili language at the university level. It was a scholarship to teach for one year. After that, I got a scholarship for master's. So for me, when I came to America, I came with the mindset I'm coming here until I die. So that's why I usually tell people, and that is another thing I will ask you, because when you come here and you haven't decided you are staying here or you are going back to Africa or back to your country, you do not know how to put your energy. Should you invest here? Should you pursue certain things? Or should you invest in your own country? You are just in the limbo and the years are going fast. So for me, I came here with the mindset I'm, I'm staying here for a longer time. So I did my master's. Yes, it is easier when you come here to get even if it will be like like if you have a degree to get a master's but to get a certain certification education within america so for instance if you are accountant get cpo for america if you are let's say you are let's say uh you are human resource officer there are certification you do computer there are those skills called all of those kind of certification it helps you to compete with the local market but still even if you have that master's you don't just go from your master's and become a manager somewhere you will start with the obvious survive. You have to do work in the warehouse. You work in the customer service. You do simple jobs. Yes, for me, I've done so many jobs, and especially in California, it's very complicated because it's over almost over 40 million people in California. Uh, so to get jobs is very very tough. So you might end up like you go. I remember I, I had one job to do in one uh, plastic companies. Uh, they are manufacturing certain companies. And there are only two people in, in all in all employees who can speak English. So it's just myself and one guy is, was in high school. So when you go, you have to go to these jobs. You don't say you have even bachelor degree. You have to say you're just high school or you're just going to college for associate, but you have masters. So you have yes, you have to start these kind of jobs, but don't search on those jobs. You continue to apply. So I continue to apply jobs. So I, I I was doing some teaching somewhere, but I was doing these kind of like warehouse jobs, doing some cleaning, do other sort of jobs. But now my job I'm doing right now is director for one organization, is a non-profit, uh, is related to what I studied because my bachelor's is political science and administration, master's is PC studies, conflict resolution, uh, things related to the uh, development, international development. So for me, I, I didn't change a lot. And the reason I didn't change it, there is, if I had to change, majority of people are going to the medical field because that pays a lot. But for me, I don't have that uh, vocation of me medical. Like, it's very difficult for me. I was poor in science and I cannot even like put the any like water in my eyes. I cannot like, yeah. So that's why I didn't change and continue that one. The disadvantage, it takes longer to get a good salary. There are things I wish I could know five years ago like it would be easy if at that time i could join the federal government job because i was a citizen i didn't do that because i didn't know you can get jobs in the federal government quicker but it is easy even if you have a foreign degree to join a federal government as long as you are a citizen you get a good job very very quick yeah yeah so we start somewhere yeah that is interesting and it's good because here you have so many opportunities compared to back in uganda i remember when i graduated it took me about two three years to get a regular job and you know here if you if you have the zeal and you have the skill you can easily get a job and make something as long as you have to work here you must work you cannot start you cannot pretending survive. <laughs> and coming late and work like how it is in uganda oh i'm sick i'm not coming today you do that twice you're fired you you're must out. 
able to be honest and be able to bring output, show yeah. your work, what can you do? But with that, if you're determined, the opportunities here are greater than how they are back home. Yes, that's the advantage of here. There is no limit. You can work on this job. And there is something people have to understand, especially coming from other cultures, where someone to fire you is a process. Or there is this, what we call, labor law. People go to the suit in the labor law. Here in almost, in all 50 states, almost 45 to 48 states, they have a law called a contract at will. That means an employer can fire you early in the morning. You come there, you get an email, you are fired, and they can and go and quit the job at any time without any notice. I quit and no hard mm -hmm. feeling. So that people have to understand that there is no about the labor law unless otherwise you are pregnant and they fire you basing on discrimination of being pregnant or they fire you because you are you say you are black or you are a woman if you come with the evidence but if it's performance or they say oh we just decided to fire you you cannot yeah. do anything so you have to be on top of your game every single day that's right yeah any another question for me um i don't know if we still have some time but we have, yeah we have time Okay, so just just a quick one, comparing the two, where would you rather be like in your retirement age? That is a very good question. Nowadays, I've been thinking much about retirement. Uh, personal, I, I, number one for me of retirement, I consider security. That's number one, and the medical care, and the no stress that's overall in the us the advantage is uh, there is a good medical system there is that security but it's also expensive very expensive uh, so nowadays there is a trend of people to go to to retire in other countries as long as you get your social security retirement money you can live anywhere so i don't necessarily i want to go to live necessarily in africa per se i'm open to go to any country in the world as long as i can retire like i can go let's say go and live in lisbon as long as i know the language so i've tried to look like which good countries the philippines or which country like first of all the safety is number one i don't want to be there and someone they kidnap you so that they can get yeah. back because you're american citizen because mm -hmm. obviously you are with your wife and sometimes the grandchildren they are coming so that is number one security wise but i don't mind to uh, go and the, have retirement in any other country, whether not necessarily because I'm from Tanzania, I have to retire in Tanzania. I can retire in Massacre in Kampala or somewhere else. I have no problem at all. But even if I don't retire another country, I will be having at least uh, a summer home, I mean, winter home, because during the summer I'll be here in the fall, winter I'm getting away. I don't want to stay in the cold because I'm retired. Yeah, so. So that would be something either to have two homes in two different areas or complete to retire in another country, which would be, I don't know, Belize or somewhere which would be warmer. So okay. Okay. But it needs a lot, like when you say retirement, sometimes, uh, especially in America, we need like those like immigrants. We need to start effectively to start investing, effectively to talk to financial planners, effectively to start doing advantage for you you come here from day one, you live with American citizen as your spouse. So there are certain things you can have those kind of, okay, this is credit card. This is how we use credit card. But most of immigrants, we come here, you come as a student, you win green card lottery, you stay with your fellow immigrant. We get too late to know even what is credit card, what is credit score? How does that help you to get a, a, a home? How does that help you to purchase, a, get a, a vehicle, uh, auto loan? So all those kind of things, we don't need to delay. We need it to go so, so fast so that when it comes to get to retire, you're already at the top of the game. You have saved uh, into all you bought some shares and all other kind of things. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so I mean, okay. I think that's it so that we don't get these people so bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I have uh, uh, one last question for you. Uh, which many people usually ask me. Uh, I know even it's a little bit different, it might not be exactly, uh, because majority of people who are winning green card lottery, they usually ask a question, 
but it might not be applicable direct because some people they know if the government give you the job. So when you came to America, did the government told you to go to Colorado and give you the job and the everything, or how did you start getting the jobs? So whether you have come on a green card lottery or you've come on a fiancé visa or spouse visa, whatever, of course, those visas that allow you to work, you have to hustle by yourself. You get here, you get where, depending if you have a host family or if you have your partner's house, whatever you're staying, you have to wait until you're, you're eligible to work. If you have a green card, I'm sure you'll be eligible to work. And you sit down and look for jobs. There are so many uh, websites where you go in and apply. So you make a CV and you start applying. And not so, those CV, the one with the, the tribe, marital status, like, you know, yeah. like African CV way back in the day. It's different. <laughs> So nobody is going to give you a job. You must look for the job yourself. You must look for where you're going to live yourself. So that is all up to you. That is like if you decide to leave your country to come here, you must not have a mindset of is the government going to help me? No, nobody is going to help you. You must work. You look for where you stay, look for your own food, look for your own jobs. That's how it is here. It's not like it is back home. So once you come here, so for example, for me, when I came, I had to wait to get the green card. I waited for, mine was quick. I, I waited for four months. After four months, I got my green card and I immediately started looking for jobs. And I got a job. I started working. I, wanted, I work at a call center. I work for a bank. So I started working from day one up to now. So you, ha you must work here to be able to get money. Everything here, this country is so capitalistic. So if you, <laughs> those people that are applying for green card, just come with a mindset of you're going to hustle. You're going to make it on your own. It's not like back home. If you don't have a job, you go to your auntie's house. That's not how it is. You must work. You must be able to have some sort of income to make sure that you have housing facilities. You, have, you can pay bills. And, you know, just survive. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, do you have any regret for your two years in America? No, I don't have any regrets so far. I, I like it here. And uh, it's, it's good if you're able to travel back and forth. It is the best thing you can do. You can visit. You can have a summer home back in Africa. And, you know, have a home here. So I'm looking forward to be able to having a home back home and also have a home here. So that, you know, during the time when you're free on vacation, you travel back home, see your people, your parents, your relatives, friends, and then you come back. And eat the real matoke. Yeah, you eat matoke, <laughs> your local food. <laughs> I miss it. <laughs> uh, yeah, each year, since 2016, 2016, each year I usually visit Uganda for my job, so except last year. So uh, every year I have to visit Uganda. So like they, uh, the first time, like they give you matoke, uh, you eat and then they give you the ripe banana to eat. It's okay, it's just <laughs> banana, banana. Like <laughs> <laughs> You're eating banana, another like, banana. And they give me a fruity banana. So, okay, I just finished eating banana. Like, <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, what we'll be doing, we'll be able to catch up with you more, like back and forth interview. And if you have, you want me specifically more, you, are, you want for specific content, you want me to be part of your guest again on your channel, I'll be happy to do that. And I will ask everyone, and I'll put the link on the description. Uh, please go and subscribe to Roll with Liz uh, channel so that you can be able to support one another and you can learn one another and ask her as many questions as you can. She, myself, I'm not an immigration lawyer. She's not an immigration lawyer, but we share our experiences, which is something very positive that an immigration lawyer just went to class, didn't go to these steps. We went through these steps. So we'll answer basing on our experiences and the actual what happened to our life. So thank you so much, Liz. Uh, okay. May God Thanks, keep everyone. blessing you. Okay.